The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us on a back to work and school Monday morning. Police are still investigating a crash that hurt two people in downtown Bakersfield over the weekend in between 23rd and 24th streets just before midnight on Saturday. According to police, two people in the white sedan were hurt when it rolled over. Those people were sent to the hospital with what police call moderate injuries. And one person died in a motorcycle crash in Oildale yesterday afternoon. According to CHP, the crash happened in uh, the area in the oil fields near China Grade Loop. CHP says a motorcycle and an F-250 collided. There's no word on the condition of the other driver. The family of a mother of three who was hit and killed in Southwest Bakersfield Friday night is pleading for the drivers who hit her to come forward. It happened around 10.30 p.m. According to Bakersfield Police, the woman was crossing Stockdale Highway near California Avenue outside of the crosswalk when she was hit by a silver sedan with a rear spoiler. She was then run over by another vehicle, a black Chevy or a GMC pickup truck. Police say both drivers took off. Investigators believe excessive speed may have been a factor. This morning, a man is fighting for his life after he was shot in East Bakersfield. Sheriff's deputies say they responded to a report of a shooting around 8 p.m. on Linwood Street, just east of Fairfax Road. Deputies say the man suffered serious injuries and is in critical condition. This is a developing story and we'll bring you more as soon as we learn an update. This morning, we are still waiting to hear from PG&E on why power was out for more than 50,000 homes and businesses in Bakersfield early Saturday. The outage affected most areas of the city as temperatures plunged into the 30s. 17 News learned some grocery stores had to throw away produce because of the outage. We have reached out to PG&E to determine the cause of this widespread blackout, but we're still waiting for a response. We'll let you know when we get an update. This morning, tributes continue to pour in for pop star Aaron Carter, who died over the weekend. Carter is the younger brother of Backstreet Boys member Nick Carter. He was found dead in his Lancaster home Saturday morning. He was found in his bathtub, and the cause of his death is not yet known. Carter reached fame in the early 2000s, opening for the Backstreet Boys and releasing hit songs like I Want Candy and I'm All About You. His fifth and final album, Love, debuted in 2018. Aaron Carter was just 34 years old. 17 News is your local election headquarters, and we are just a little more than 24 hours away from polls opening across Kern County. And while tomorrow may be election day, try to think of it as more of an election deadline. Yeah, that's because most people vote early or by mail in elections across the country. This midterm is going to be an interesting one to watch as it could determine the balance of power in Congress. But if you're expecting final results before you go to bed tomorrow night, you might be disappointed. As LX News political editor Noah Prinsky explains, it has nothing to do with any funny business. There are three reasons we need to be okay not knowing election results on election night. Close margins, slow counts, and Georgia. I can explain what to expect in under two minutes. The truth is we never have all of our ballots counted on election night. Overseas ballots, mail ballots, provisionals, those take time. It just doesn't matter very much when the election isn't close. When it is close? Well, these are the 15 states that didn't have a projected presidential winner on election night 2020. These are the states still undecided four days after the election. And winners weren't called in these four states for more than a week. Vote totals shift in the days after polls close. It's not an indicator of fraud. It's an indicator local election officials are counting every vote. But sometimes the count is unnecessarily slow. Lawmakers in key states have insisted election officials don't touch mail ballots until election day, even though 38 states, including Florida, California, and Texas, give officials a head start by allowing them to prepare mail-in ballots for counting ahead of election day. The kicker? Many of the same politicians who baselessly claimed the slow count in 2020 was proof of fraud helped kill reforms in 2022 that would have sped up the process and reduced the backlog. I'm telling you this because there are people working behind the scenes right now to use a slow count as evidence of fraud. It's not. Feel free to bookmark this clip for future use. Oh, 
Georgia. The only state in the country that requires Senate candidates to get 50% of the vote. But just like in 2020, this year's Senate race has more than two candidates. And just like 2020, it could go to a runoff. And just like 2020, that runoff could decide the entire balance of power in the Senate, as well as the future of the Biden agenda. If that's the case, we won't know who controls Congress for at least a month after Election Day. As for all those claims of fraud that are sure to follow, well, we'll be lucky if those subside by 2024, which is why we made this guide today. We're all going to need it. And we're back here in your Health Watch this morning. Fertility care is often a topic stigmatized or not prioritized as a serious health problem. But there can be serious roadblocks standing in the way of parenthood. Now a new local nonprofit is trying to change that by making fertility care more accessible. 17's Mikhail Armstrong has more on the new resource right here in Kern County. Infertility is one of those things where people feel uncomfortable talking about it. They feel like something's wrong with them. That's how Bakersfield resident Ashley Anton Giovanni felt as she struggled on her journey to motherhood. After we lost Amelia at 20 weeks gestation, um, we started, you know, trying to figure out all these ways, like how can we have a family of our own? Anton Giovanni thought of IVF, surrogacy, and more to continue our family, but the prices were steep. We were like, man, these prices are crazy, so we don't, there's no way we're going to be able to do this. Which led her to start her own company, Amelia Malloy's Angels, in memory of her daughter, Amelia Malloy, to help families in Kern County who experience infertility by relieving financial stress. We want people to know that they are not alone in this struggle, that infertility happens to a lot more people than they actually think, and we just want to help these families. We do not want money to be a reason why these families cannot be created. The need for fertility care is rising in Kern County as the number of those facing infertility increases, but it is underserved. There's just such a need right now. Um, some of the OBGYNs that I spoke to in Kern County, they do say the numbers are one in eight. Our OBGYNs are saying it could be closer to one in four at this point. However, Sorry, Anton you. Giovanni is one of many stepping up oh. to fill the gap. Mate Fertility, a newly opened fertility care center, is broadening access to care in underserved Central Valley markets, including Kern County. Founder of the center, Gabriel Bogner, says this center is changing fertility care. When you look at the Bakersfield and the surrounding area, that's almost two million people. And today there's one clinic supporting upwards of 2 million people, which is a crazy thing to think about. That's virtually no access for a lot of people. And remember, 20 to 30% of people nowadays need access to some type of fertility care. And so Mate Fertility is coming in to be that second location, to be that care center. With hopes that more fertility care is provided to those in need and more conversations are had to destigmatize infertility. 17 News is your local election headquarters and voter enthusiasm is high ahead of the midterms. More than 40 million Americans have voted early, breaking a 2018 midterm uh, record of 39 million. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with the latest. A final pitch to voters in the final days leading into a crucial midterms. This election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. On the campaign trail, President Biden is touting his administration's investments in climate, That's warned of threats to now. democracy, and praised job gains under Democratic leadership. This weekend was filled with last-minute campaigning by former presidents and Mr. Biden in the Keystone State. At Republican rallies, former President Trump, who's poised to make another run at the White House, putting the blame on those in power now for Americans' economic woes. If you want to stop the destruction of our country and save the American dream, then this Tuesday you must vote Republican in a giant red wave. The final NBC News poll before Election Day shows President Biden's approval at only 44 percent. This election is about the Biden agenda. People don't like high inflation, high crime, open borders, fentanyl. Abortion is also on the ballot and is among the key issues Democrats are focusing on. We're going to defend our, our mainstream Democratic values against the threats to our democracy. We're going to protect women's reproductive freedom and voting rights. In our latest NBC News poll, election enthusiasm is now dead even at 73% for both Republicans and Democrats. 
With less than 24 hours until Election Day and control of Congress at stake, both parties are doing everything they can to sway last-minute voters. So what's at stake Tuesday? All 435 House seats, 35 Senate seats, and majority power in Congress. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris will return to Los Angeles for a final round of campaign appearances before Election Day. The Vice President has focused on abortion and women's rights in Democratic st strongholds like California. Today, Harris will attend a rally on reproductive rights where L.A. mayoral candidate Karen Bass is also expected. The Vice President has spent recent days stumping for Democrats in New York and Illinois. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.